Last time freshman, just a little bit higher. Arms down. <laughs> Interesting watching you. The first time I asked you to put your hand near as high as you possibly could, most of you kind of gave me this little number. I challenged you to go higher and you did, higher and you did. It was the most fun to watch your faces on the very last attempt. I said last time just a little bit higher. You should have seen you looking back at me. Some of you are like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is what we can do and this is what we settle for. And as you start your very first day of high school, the difference between an average high school career and an awesome one would be your ability to stretch a little bit. I was 16 years old, a sophomore, and we had a speaker that came to our school, and a lot of us weren't anticipating very much that day, but this guy was totally different. Certainly while he was there for 500 kids in that audience, it felt more like he was there for me that day, and I was kind of having an up and down year. I mean, he talked about decisions and attitude, making sure you're taking control of your life. When he wrapped it up, I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe, that is something that I could do for a profession. I was blessed to start my own business at age 23 and now I'm in my mid 40s and, and this has been a full-time calling for me and you know a lot of times people think well it's a job and it's really not a job it's a calling. This is what I get to do. I get to work with high school kids and middle school kids throughout the United States. I've been collecting great moments as one kid said he was eight years old. He's at Sears with his dad. His dad's reached over getting some drill bits, so he jumps on his dad's back, only it wasn't his dad. <laughs> one girl scored the wrong basket in a basketball game twice in one game. <laughs> one girl comes out of the grocery store, she's texting left and right, gets in the car, is like, Dad, when did you start listening to country music? You're not my dad, I got in the wrong car. Working with teens for me is a blast. For me, there's no higher high than walking into a gym or an auditorium and seeing five, six, seven hundred people walk in, not really knowing what's going on. The music is blasted. We start with kind of a fun little game. I try to take them on a roller coaster ride. We're going to go up, we're going to get them to laugh, and then boom, I hit them solid with a point that is really serious, and yet because their mind is open through the humor, they get the message. I'm now at the edge of Big Brave. It's now time for a decision. Here's what you get, guys. In your life and in mine, your decisions will determine your direction. Let me say it again. Your decisions will determine your direction. And every time you have a tough choice in front of you, and there will be a lot of challenging choices in front of you, you might want to ask yourself a couple of questions. Like, if I do this, where is it going to take me? If I do this, how am I going to feel about it tomorrow? If I do this, will I be proud to tell others about it? Good questions. My wife and I are blessed. We have been married for 20 plus years, two teenagers. What I try to do is to go into what it's like being a parent. We have some funny stuff that's happening. I get a chance to use them in my program, talk about what it's like to be a dad and how parents sometimes get on your case and ask the dumb questions. So certainly I weave that into the program. Who's ever had a parent that goes like this? Oh, I get it. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I don't know what's going on. My advice is not the bomb. Oh, let me ask you a question. Would you agree there are some words a guy my age should not use? Would you all agree with me on that? Totally, right? But I'm going to tell you this right now. My son, the senior, he is a messy kid. He does not clean up after himself. So I motivate him to clean up by embarrassing him in front of his friends. Sometimes he's been sloppy. His friends were like, hey, what is up, D-O double G? My son's like, you better knock it. I say, you better clean it up. Or shut up. <laughs> or sometimes they play it real straight and narrow. New friend comes over. He's like, Dad, this is my new friend. I go, what's going on, G? <laughs> Before you leave, you should probably brush your grill. <laughs> Need you to wash my car because I don't want to get caught riding it dirty. Hey, hey, make sure you take your vitamins. I heard there's a lot of kids that got this stanky leg disease. Being a dad of two teenagers, I also see the other side of it, where it's tough. I mean, there are days when they have to navigate through some pretty difficult waters. Being a parent really allows me to see what their lives are like. So when I try to get a message across, I know that there are some kids that are hurting out there, and maybe some kids, everything's going perfect, but being a dad, you get a chance to see the tough stuff as well.
My goal is to help them navigate through these challenging times. Believe it or not, your parents might actually know something that you don't know. Look at you guys going, I don't think that's possible. Man. <laughs> My dad had these little phrases he would always say. And it was interesting, as, as I'm at the edge of Big Brave, I heard his words, he always said, remember, you don't have to be great to start something, but you've got to start something to be great. Freshman, first day of school. You don't have to be great to start something, you've got to start something to be great. So many opportunities here at Rosemont. You've got to get involved. When I talk to a group, an assembly for instance, resilience, respect, responsibility are, are my main messages that I want to get across. Resilience, bouncing back when things aren't going very well and with every setback there's a comeback. Respect, such a huge piece today in high schools and middle schools where we've got some bullying that's happening right now. And My thing is you don't have to be friends with everybody but you can be friendly with the people that you go to school with and so I spend some time and share some stories about kids who have been on the wrong side of the the respect issue and I have found that most kids start to open up the fact that maybe they are not being very tolerant and accepting of other people. The last key piece is responsibility. To own your life decisions, to know that sometimes you're going to have a few of those mistakes and I call them great moments in my program and then there are some reckless moments that I get into as well that we certainly want to stay away from. So my main points when I do an assembly, resilience, respect and responsibility. So bottom line, responsibility is your ability to Respond. So I travel across the United States. I've been invited to your school several times. Students here are always awesome. And yet I gotta tell you something. As I travel across the United States and I play this game, I always see one of three approaches. Every day of your life, when you're asked to do something, one of three things you can do. Most people go like this. Simon says, huh? All right, fine, I'll play your little game. <laughs> you come to Rosemount, we're playing Simon Says, somebody like, bring it. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a group of kids that are like, what? We got to do stuff? I don't do stuff. And if you take this third approach on, it's going to be a long four years. Of course, one of the main pieces is to make sure that kids don't fall into some of the traps that can really destroy their high school career when you look at drugs, alcohol, tobacco. I mean, some of those things that may look appealing because some people are doing them. Just to understand that one night, I mean if you look at alcohol alone, either one night or over a lifetime, how it can destroy somebody's life and my line is that with every kick comes a kick back and we don't want to buy into the lie of the high and to really challenge kids to make their own decisions when it comes to alcohol, drugs and tobacco. Who's ever seen this happen? Either in one night or over a lifetime where alcohol and drugs have destroyed somebody's life. It's kind of like this. You ever gone sledding with a bunch of your friends before? You look down the hill and you go, whew, it's a little steeper than I thought. But if we go slow, we can stay in control. You make a turn to the right, you make a turn left, you're doing okay. A turn to the right, a turn left, you're doing okay. Who's been on the sled you cannot turn anymore and you're picking up more and more speed and you go, oh no, there's a tree rocker fence. One kid yells out, Cliff! I'm like, you're a dangerous kid. And if you bail, it's gonna hurt. You stay on really gonna hurt. Pivotal choice guys, what you decide to do with alcohol and drugs and I just hope you don't fall in that trap because please remember with every kick comes a kick back. Way too many things going for you to fall in the trap. It's important for me to spend a few minutes on the telephone with someone who is interested in having a speaker. We can go back and forth on email, but I can't really get a vibe for who you are and what your kids are like. What are your challenges? What are your goals? What are your objectives? What are you trying to accomplish within a day or within a program? After our conversation, we decide, is it a fit? If it's a fit, we proceed. And if you're looking for something that really I'm not an expert in, then I'm gonna link you up with a colleague because I never just put a date on my calendar just to put a date on my calendar. It's got to be a win for the person on the other side and so usually after 10 minutes on the telephone we know if it's something that's going to fit we go for it if not I'm going to pass you on to somebody else the bottom line is it's really about the kids and working with your goals and objectives so I just encourage anybody that's watching this if it looks like it might be something that you'd like to explore just give me a call we'll spend a few minutes on the phone and we'll figure it out